Obviously, many people have read about the war in 1941 and 42. Most German generals, Melantin, Guderian, von Bunstein, wrote their memoirs after the war. Most Americans, North America and Latin America, read those histories. And what they learned was a German perspective on the war. The victories the Wehrmacht accomplished in 41 and 42. Absent from that mosaic of writing was what happened then to produce Allied victory, Red Army's victory in Berlin in 1943, 44, and 45. Three turning points. Battle of Moscow, December 1941. Defeated Operation Barbarossa, Hitler's initial plan. After the defeat of the German defeat at Moscow, there was no question that the Germans could win the war on their terms. That was gone. The chance of winning was gone. Stalingrad, 1942, the culmination of Operation Blau, Hitler's second offensive. The defeat of German forces, the destruction of German 6th Army, the defeat and serious damage to German 2nd Army, Romanian 3rd and 4th, and Hungarian 2nd and Italian 8th. Seven armies were destroyed or badly beaten in that campaign. That guaranteed that Germany would lose the war. Lose it. The question remained, how long would it take? When would they lose it? The final turning point, in my opinion, was Kursk in the summer of 43, when the, when the Germans had conducted Operation Citadella, their last great offensive, an attempt to seize momentum, which failed rather dramatically. Uh, after Kursk, we knew that the war, all the world knew that the war would end in the Fuhrer bunker in Berlin. The Soviets would not be satisfied until they were in the, the lion's lair. Russians are, are proud people. They know the price they paid in the war. They know the losses they suffered and they were catastrophic compared to any other army. The Soviets lost in the Battle of Berlin, just Berlin, in about a month in 1945, more than the U.S. lost in the entire war. Incredible numbers. Um, Obviously, an army the size of the Red Army needed leaders, needed competent leaders, and they have their leaders. The problem is that under Stalin, and the tendency was under other Soviet leaders, to emphasize one or two or three to the exclusion of others. And you had to be a great Russian commander to achieve that popularity. Certainly, Zhukov stands at the top of the heap. Uh, Vasilyevsky is my favorite. Vasilyevsky, who's the penultimate staff officer and leads the major offensive in Manchuria in August 1945. Another of my favorites is Rokosovsky. Uh, never received full credit for his contributions because in many Russians' eyes he was a Pole, a Belarusian, and there was favoritism shown toward great Russians. Uh, you can go down the lists of marshals of the Soviet Union and come up with perhaps 20 names people that Westerners should know. What I'm saying is that there is an absence in the West of a, any sort of understanding of the Soviet contribution. And I would argue beyond that that there are consequences. That what happened in June, July, August 1941 had an indelible impact on the Soviet and Russian psyche. Tremendous losses, catastrophic losses. And as a result, the Soviet Union, after the war, had a slogan essentially, never again, never again will we allow this to occur. That was why the Soviet Union maintained the largest military force in the world, and ultimately it bankrupted the state. The Russian Federation today realizes the vulnerability, of its own vulnerability, and also harkens back to the great patriotic war and fear for what happened in the first year of that war. What happened there before has shaped history since and will continue to shape Russian attitudes in the future.